The OpenMV is a microcontroller platform that makes machine vision easy, or at least easier. It contains a powerful ARM processor along with an onboard camera module. Out of the box, it runs MicroPython with an API that allows you to create sensing and filtering applications with only a few function calls. This is the OpenMV H7, which has an ARM Cortex M7 running at 400 megahertz. It's got one megabyte of RAM and two megabytes of onboard flash. There's an SD card slot if you'd like to add more flash space. The camera module can take 640 by 480 images and it's capable of up to 60 frames per second at a resolution of 320 by 240. The lens is adjustable and removable, so you can add things like wide angle lenses. The camera sensor itself is modular, so you can replace it with a different sensor, like a FLIR Lepton infrared module. Note that there is also a PLUS model in production that has more memory and a better camera sensor. All of this makes OpenMV a great way to get started with machine vision. The real power comes with its connection to the IDE. In the rest of the video, I'll show you how to get started with this slick dev board. Head to OpenMV.io and go to Downloads. Download the OpenMV IDE installer for your operating system. When it's done, install it, accepting all the defaults. Use a USB micro cable to connect the OpenMV camera to your computer. Start the OpenMV IDE and you should notice that it pops up with an example Hello World program. In the bottom left corner, you should see an icon showing you if the OpenMV is connected or not. The thing that looks like two plugs means it's not connected. If I click on it, the IDE will tell me that the camera was not found and offers to help me unbrick it, which could be useful if I ever corrupt the firmware running on it. If the camera is plugged in, you should see a USB symbol appear over the double plug icon. Click on it to connect to the camera. If you have a brand new camera, the IDE will probably want you to upgrade the firmware, which I'll do. I'll go ahead and erase the files stored on the camera as well. When the upgrade process is done, you should get a pop-up telling you that the module is running an internal test. Wait for the LED on the camera to start blinking blue and then click OK. We can run this example program by simply clicking on the play button under the connect button. This will start running the Hello World program on the camera module. The pane in the upper right will show you what the camera sees by displaying its internal frame buffer. If you haven't done so already, remove the lens cap. Feel free to move the camera about and look at the color histograms, which gives you an indication of how much RGB brightness is in each frame. Note that the first time you run this program, the image might look out of focus. To fix that, unscrew the set screw near the lens and rotate the lens until the image looks like it's in focus. If you notice that the image looks dirty, you can also use some rubbing alcohol and a microfiber cloth to clean the lens and sensor, which you can access by removing the lens mount. Back in the IDE, you can see that the frames per second measurement is being printed out each iteration of the main while loop. Click the serial terminal button at the bottom of the IDE to bring up a terminal that displays this measurement. Keep in mind that the OpenMV board also enumerates as a mass storage device on your computer. As a result, you can read and write files to the board. However, note that space is extremely limited, only about 100 kilobytes. If you try to store larger files here, like images taken from the camera, you could corrupt this file system. This space is mostly used to store MicroPython code. If you'd like to add more space to store longer programs or store images taken from the camera, your best bet is to add an SD card. I learned that OpenMV recently added support for TensorFlow, which includes a few machine learning demos. Let's use one of those demos to create a person detection system. Many of these home monitoring cameras are capable of detecting people in frame, but most of them seem to charge you an extra monthly fee to enable that feature. That's ridiculous, so let's make our own. If you go to File, Examples, Machine Learning, you can see there are a couple of person detection examples. Let's open the whole window one. We'll use this as a basis for our example, but let's go through line by line and modify it for our purposes. Please note that you can head to docs.openmv.io to view the API documentation. We'll be working mostly with the image and TensorFlow classes. In a new project, import the board, sensor, image, time, OS, and TensorFlow modules. Next, let's set a threshold to identify a person. This should be something between 0 and 1, as it's essentially the probability that the neural network thinks a person is in the frame. 0.7 sounds good. We'll use the PYB module to set up an LED. This allows us to control the RGB LED that's already on the board. 
By passing in an argument of 1, we're telling the board we want to control the red LED. We'll start with the LED off, as we'll only want to turn it on when there's a person in the frame. Next, we initialize the camera sensor by calling reset and set the format and frame size. Grayscale works well for person detection, and 320 by 240 works for detecting people within a few meters. We can use the set windowing function to crop the frame from the sensor, which we'll keep to a 240 by 240 square. Finally, OpenMV recommends letting the camera adjust for a couple of seconds before capturing data. The TensorFlow library in OpenMV comes with a pre-trained person detection neural network, which we can use by calling the load function. We'll need to designate a few labels here. These can be called whatever you want, but note that the order matters. If a person is detected in the frame, it will give us a higher probability for the second label, regardless of what it's called. Next, we start the clock, which helps us measure frames per second. In the main while loop, we call clock.tick to update the time and then immediately get an image from the camera. I left the comments in here from the OpenMV example so you can see how the classify function works. We could have a smaller window slide over the larger image looking for a person in each window. This is a good way to identify multiple people in a frame or find where a person is located in that frame. However, it requires a lot more computation time as inference would need to be performed on each window. We just want to know if a person is in the frame or not, so we won't scale anything and leave the overlaps at zero. This should result in one output object that gives us the probability score of each label, which we'll print to the console. Next, we use a couple of draw functions to outline the image, which is just the whole frame, and put the inferred label in the upper left corner. Finally, we get the output probability of our person label and compare it to our threshold. If it's over our threshold, we turn on the red LED, otherwise we turn it off. I'll also print out the frames per second so we can get an idea of how fast this is running. Let's run this program. In the frame viewer, you can see when a person is detected or not by looking at the string in the upper left corner. In the serial terminal, we can see the output probabilities of each label and also see it's running between 5 and 6 frames per second. We can save this program to our computer by selecting File, Save As. Additionally, note that it only runs while the OpenMV is connected to the computer. If we want this to run independently on the microcontroller, we need to select Tools, Save Script to OpenMV. This will remove comments to save space and replace main.py on the camera itself. If you're on Windows, I recommend unmounting the drive first before unplugging it, as that will force Windows to sync the drive and make sure it's done writing. Then we can unplug the camera. I've set the camera up on my counter and plugged it into the wall for power. It's acting like a security camera looking for person-like objects in my living room. So now when I enter into the field of view of the camera, the light comes on. This could be the start of your very own DIY home security system. It could say, send a notification to your phone whenever it detected a person in its field of view. You'd probably need to add Wi-Fi or something else to the project to make that work. But I hope this has helped you get started with the OpenMV camera. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and happy hacking! <laughs>